Hi, my name is Mike Ward. I'm the Global Director of Content at Script, The Pink Sheet and InVivo. Here at the Biotech Showcase 2018, uh, a meeting that runs parallel with the JP Morgan Healthcare uh, Conference, which is the traditional kickoff for the pharmaceutical industry, where executives from the pharma industry plus in investors and biotech companies all get together to discuss the sort of the issues uh, of the day, uh, you know, what's keeping uh, executives awake at night, but also it's an opportunity to get an update uh, on the progress uh, that we're seeing uh, in the industry and also an opportunity for people to start having uh, conversations about, about deal making. One of the uh, hot areas of course is in the, in the cancer space. Uh, a lot of it is in sort of immuno-oncology but actually there is sort of still some more sort of you know, conventional approaches to treating cancer is important. So I, I'm joined by uh, yeah, Randall Woods, or, or Randy, who is the CEO of Sephiris, uh, a California-based uh, company with a focus on, on, on cancer and a kind of acute way of tackling uh, prostate cancer. So uh, welcome, Randall. Thank you. And could you, could you sort of explain the, the, sort of the, the approach that, that, that you guys have got? Yeah, sure, Mike, I'd be glad to. So with uh, our drug, it's called Topsilicin. This drug is a protein, meaning it's a biologic. And this drug has been genetically modified at Johns Hopkins University such that it only is activated when it comes into contact with enzymatically active PSA. The reason that's important is that enzymatically active PSA is produced by the prostate cancer cells so if you can just get our drug into and around those prostate cancer cells, because there's just an abundance of enzymatically active PSA there, it'll activate the drug and it'll destroy the tumor. So, so the top cell isolation, what, what was actually genetically modified? Was, was it genetically modified so it would be responsive to this activated uh, PSA? Yes, in nature, if you found this drug in nature, basically it would have been, uh, it would have been act actually activated by the enzyme furin, and so what they did, I think, absolutely brilliantly at Johns Hopkins University is they actually uh, genetically modified a sequence of six amino acids such that now instead of it being activated by the enzyme furin, it's now only activated by uh, enzymatically active PSA. One of the reasons that's so important is that enzymatically active PSA is only found within the prostate. So you have no systemic detection of this drug throughout the body. That leads to the very attractive safety profile that we've seen with this drug. Right, so you say it was uh, the, the genetic mo modification took place at uh, Johns Hopkins. Right. Um, so have you sort of licensed in uh, the, the, the technology from there? The technology actually is licensed from Johns Hopkins University as well as the University of Victoria in British Columbia. So we pay a small licensing fee to, uh, to those two institutions. Okay, so, so what, what have you actually done with, with the molecules so far? What, what sort of proof of principle or concept? That's a great question. So we've, we've actually done a proof of concept trial, uh, finished that up last year, had very positive results. Uh, very, very pleased to report that of the 18 patients that we treated, about 60% of those patients had a response to our drug, and of the 60% of those patients included two patients that had complete ablations of the tumors. So there was absolutely no histological evidence of the tumor remaining whatsoever after a single treatment with topsilicin. So what, so the primary endpoint was to actually sort of see the impact of the, of the compound on on the, on the tumors? We were really looking for two things, and that, that certainly is one of them. What we're interested in looking at is how effective, after a period of time uh, since topsilicin has been administered, uh, how quickly can that reduce the size of that tumor and take it from what we call a clinically significant tumor down to being one that would be called uh, clinically insignificant, meaning that it no longer requires treatment. Right. So, was, uh, was Sephiris uh, developed or, or built to, 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 to commercialize this, this, this compound? It, it actually was a number of years ago up in British Columbia and about six years ago it was brought down to La Jolla, California uh, to really bring on board the clinical development team that has been able to move this drug forward. So we're anticipating results from, the, from a phase 2B clinical trial right now on localized prostate cancer. Those results are actually expected to be available at the end of next quarter, so coming up very soon. 
and then I'm making the assumption that those results are going to be positive since it's interesting, Mike, the, the, the results from this drug have always been consistently positive and the safety profile has always been consistently very attractive. So assuming those positive results, then the idea would be that we would then roll right into what we would call a single phase three registration trial for the treatment of localized prostate cancer. And when I say localized prostate cancer, what I mean by that is prostate cancer that has not yet metastasized beyond the confines of the prostate, so, so not metastasized. Okay, so could you just describe the sort of the, um, the details of the phase 2B trial? I mean, so how many patients have you uh, enrolled or enrolling? Yeah, so we just completed enrollment uh, towards the end of last year with approximately 40 patients enrolled. Uh, it's a study that is uh, being done in both the UK and here in the US. We have about four sites in each of those geographies. Um, and so basically what will happen is patients who have been identified as having what we call a, a high volume Gleason 6 score or Gleason 7, which is basically just a way of measuring the aggressiveness of the cancer, uh, those would be the target patient population. And so those patients would receive a single administration of our drug, they come back six months later, get an MRI, get a biopsy done with the goal that that drug has totally ablated those cancerous tumor cells. That's the goal. And of course, we want to make certain that we continue to see this very attractive safety profile uh, with the doses of our top cell. Right. So you're sort of saying sort of, uh, you're going to get some, uh, some readouts at the end of this quarter. At end of next quarter. Yeah. So um, when do you think you'll be making the decision around the phase three? So what we'd like to do, what I, what I failed to mention is that in this phase 2B trial that you just asked me to describe, I know I mentioned that we're going to have some results from an, some initial biopsy results by the end of next quarter. Uh, for those patients in that trial who have an initial response to the drug but not a complete response, they actually have an option, and it's the first time we've ever offered this, um, these patients have an option for a second dose. And so uh, the results of those patients who might receive the second dose will be available towards the end of this year. And so I think what we want to do, Mike, is we want to make sure that we've aggregated, aggregated the data from both uh, of those uh, patient groups uh, in order to then develop our phase three clinical program. Right, and, and, and what's the sort of the partnering status of, of these programs? I'm sorry, what's the... What, what, what is the partnering status? Have, have you got partners so on board? We, we currently um, have not partnered the drug other than um, Keystone Pharmaceuticals has uh, Japanese rights to this drug, uh, but we're, we are looking at talking with some particular partners to see if we might want some additional help uh, moving the drug forward into phase three clinical trial development. Yeah, because of course the, the obvious question is, you know, how, how well is the is Sephira's finance to and, be able to do this? And, and in fact, uh, we're actually quite well financed at the moment. Uh, we have enough money in the bank currently that we can get ourselves all the way through the completion of this phase two clinical trial in localized prostate cancer, meaning, you know, the end of this year when we have those results that will be made available. So we have enough money to get us all the way through the completion of the study and then a pretty significant runway uh, well into the middle of uh, next year, 20, 2019. Okay, okay. So you're not looking for money just... Well, we're, we, you never have enough money. So uh, we would certainly consider being opportunistic if we see that there's a nice uh, rise or stock appreciation. Uh, we might try to take advantage of that and bring in some additional funds to continue to move these programs forward. But you suspect or you expect that you are going to require partners to do the, the phase three trial? I mean, we're always evaluating those options. You know, it could be uh, acquiring a partner, it could be raising the money and doing it ourselves, or a little of each, actually. Okay. And, and beyond uh, Toxalysin, what, what else? Uh, 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 is the company so the drug actually uh, we've been talking only about cancer but uh, the company is really a urology company focused on men's health and so this drug will actually work in another indication called benign prostatic hyperplasia which simply means enlarged yes. prostate in men and so we've already completed a successful phase 3 clinical trial in BPH uh, so we just need to uh, successfully complete a second phase three clinical trial in BPH in order to gain regulatory approval. Uh, that will cost about $40 million to do, so we need to raise money for that or find a partner to help us move that development program forward as well. Okay, right. Well, Randy, thanks very much for, for stopping by and uh, you know, explaining the story to us. Thank you so much. Cheers.